We are all aware of the increasing number of patients and the expansion of critical care. Patients today are more aware of their medical choices. Therefore, we need to be more prepared in order to maintain excellence in the care that we deliver. The most common life support system used in critical care units is a head wall configuration. This has been the standard design for many years, dating back to the times when ICUs were modified recovery rooms. Medical gases, vacuum and electrical outlets are mounted on the head wall behind the patient and usually distributed on both sides of the patient. The monitor is usually wall mounted. The problem with head wall design is the requirement in an emergency situation to move the bed away from the wall. During an emergency, the bed must be relocated to allow access to the patient's airway. This usually involves having to step carefully over various lines and connections in order to reach the head of the bed. The proposed solution is the power column. It is a manufactured utility and equipment mounting column fixed at the ceiling and levelled to be effectively used for the patient. It contains many configurations of power supply, medical gases, vacuum, communication ports and monitor mounts. It has a very small footprint in the room and is normally positioned diagonally behind and to the side of the patient's head. One of its advantages is the ability to position the bed in a variety of locations arranged around the column position to give direct, continuous, unrestricted access to the head of the critical care patient. With a dual power column concept, the footprint will remain small. The real innovation in these products is the ability to swing the orbiting arm to a variety of locations and degrees that allows for a portable C-arm fluoroscope to operate at the bedside. Clinical benefits. Freeze up head wall. Promotes unobstructed patient access. Reduces clutter. Provides flexible room changes based upon patient lines and airway management requirements. Eliminates equipment footprint. Streamlines workflow. Improves aesthetics. Double articulated arms. The double articulated arms are capable of rotating up to 350 degrees at each joint by repositioning the user adjustable stops. Electromagnetic brakes allow the unit to maintain position as set by the clinical staff. Release buttons are used to disengage the brakes when repositioning is required. Spatial positioning is carried out by rotational movement of the support system by means of a maintenance-free precision roller bearing. The combined arm and column assembly are capable of supporting accessory loads up to 400 pounds. Finish on the arm is a surf powder. Now let's talk about critical care room designs. Art is a positive distraction, as are clocks and calendars. A view is also a welcome distraction. A pleasant image of nature that can be seen by the patient is an example of a positive distraction. The idea is to implement all the elements that can make the ICU begin to be a healing architecture. Examples of this include improved lighting and allowing natural light to enter the room, repainting the room using pleasant colours, furniture added by the patient's families, hanging baskets with flowers outside the windows so that the ICU room will attract spontaneous praise from the patient and family. This is an example of how simple and inexpensive conversion can be. A concrete step across the head will serve as a raised step. This will allow the respiratory therapist to reach over the headboard for access to the patient's head and airway. It will also serve as a bed positioning device. Avoiding the traditional patient room configuration of installing 
the head of the bed back to back with the neighbouring room. This leads to a major transfer of noise between the rooms. By including a medication cabinet with fridge inside the patient's room that can be accessed by an authorised personnel only using ID access system. This will decrease the chances of error in medication administration and eliminate the possibility of giving the patient the wrong medication. Also, it will reduce the amount of time and energy used by the nurse to bring it from the medication room at the central nurse's station. Although the patient's room must address critical care needs, privacy must be taken into consideration, especially during the recovery stage. Although the glass doors with curtain combination currently being used are adequate, we can allow for more visibility and privacy at the same time in other ways, such as the use of a large window that becomes opaque at the flip of a switch, facilitated by an electronically charged window. Hanging a clear label in front of the patient's rooms declaring that the patient is sleeping will help the conscious patient to have undisturbed rest time even during the day. If nurses are unaware that a physician has written an order, then a delay in care is inevitable. This can be minimised by implementing a wall-mounted button that the physician will press to alert the staff taking care of the patient there is a new or stat order. To prevent patient falls, bathroom lights can be designed to turn on automatically when it detects anyone entering. By installing surfaces that prevent standing water, it should be possible to prevent bacterial colonisation. This can further be enhanced by the use of self-cleaning surfaces. These surfaces contain titanium dioxide nanoparticles which absorb UV light and excites electrons to oxidise. This process will kill microbes. Copper touch surfaces will oxidatively damage microbe cells and decrease its membrane integrity by affecting its protein binding. This will lead to the elimination of the microbes and their effects. Okay, so let's talk about nursing stations. There is a strong trend in the newer design to include decentralised nursing stations, as the typical staffing ratio of 1 to 1 and 1 to 2 suggests that a robust set of decentralised support functions can make the nurse work more efficient. Typical functions will include writing services, communication and access to information systems, computers, supplies, hand washing sink and space for one or two people to sit. With this model, the central station does not need to be as large as previously. The hybrid model may benefit the staff by reducing the time that they have to spend travelling to collect supplies, items and medications. Also, it may increase efficiency and give staff more time with their patients. This, in turn, may reduce the chance of patient falls. By placing the most critical patients closest to the station, we maximise the accessibility and visibility of the patient. So, what are our recommendations from this? Use of a hybrid model that combines a centralised station with smaller satellite nurses stations. Central stations can act as a socialisation and rest space for nurses. While substations are for individual work, nurses need time for socialisation and rest, but often are uncomfortable taking long breaks away from their patients. A central nurses station gives nurses a place to take a break while still being on the unit and aware of what's going on. The hybrid model gives nurses and other hospital caregivers choice. With only a centralised station or only substations, it is difficult to accommodate the levels of collaboration and communication that take place. For example, small groups can work comfortably in central stations but would be crowded and without privacy at a substation. Substations give nurses the space and quiet they need to work on their own. 
but they also need larger meeting spaces to work with their peers. A centralised nurses station with immersive workspaces would grant this space and designate a location for patient records and technology. Isolated meeting spaces would take caregivers away from the environment in which they work. In conclusion, there is no question that these improvements will better address the clinical needs of the critical care multidisciplinary team and accommodate new types of equipment and advanced technologies designed for critical care use. It will be a more flexible unit, better suited to the requirements of a continuously changing field and to be efficient and economical. It will offer the patient and their family a positive nurturing environment, supporting the healing process and their psychosocial needs. In the same way, it will offer a supportive environment for the sometimes highly stressed professional team. It is hoped that it will make critical care a better place to work, as well as a better place for treating serious illness.